Energy markets are a burning topic now with gas prices going sky high in Europe and coal prices breaking all-time records. There have been infinite hypotheses lodged online blaming some very credible causes, including reduced gas storage and nuclear. Somewhere also the causal link appears to be missing, like renewables. Renewables are variable, but without them, Europe would undoubtedly need more gas and be in more strife. The world's second largest economy is facing a power shortage owing to a combination of factors. They include extreme weather, surging demand for Chinese exports, and a national push to reduce carbon emissions, according to President Xi Jinping. China is an industrial powerhouse and the planet's biggest emitter of carbon dioxide. The country generates most of its electricity by burning coal, but the inventory of major power plants reached a 10-year low in August. But how can this be possible? Hello everyone, welcome to World of China, a channel to explore China. In today's video, we're talking about the coal crisis between Australia and China, causing China an acute shortage of electricity. So stay tuned and give this video a big thumbs up. Exactly a year ago in October 2020, Chinese state-owned companies were ordered to stop the import of Australian coal, widely viewed as vengeance for Australia's more critical stance in China. It came as trade tensions between the two countries soared after Australia retreated a call for an international inquiry into China's handling of the coronavirus. The restrictions on Australian coal naturally pose a new opportunity for other parties in the region, particularly in East Asia and Northeast Asia, to fill China's coal shortfall. As a result, China turned to Indonesia, Mongolia, Russia, and other countries to try and make up for the shortfall. Last year, reports said that Indonesian coal miners signed a $1.5 billion supply deal with China. But apparently, it wasn't enough. In June 2021, Chinese factories began to report power outages and electric shortages. The Lantu Group's September 20th report showed the provinces with the most severe power consumption problems to include Xinjiang, Qinghai, Yunnan, Changsu, Fujian, Guangxi, and Guangdong, where China's major manufacturing companies are located. Restrictions on electricity supply will cut economic growth and exacerbate the slowdown caused by problems in China's residential construction sector. China's central and local governments alike are now actively looking for solutions to the domestic energy shortage before the winter, particularly in its northeastern provinces, which will face freezing temperatures in the coming months. By mid to late 2020, coal was looking to be in grave crisis. Chinese inventories were high, and shipping data showed that much of the supply of coal to southern China was now coming from northern China ports, leaving little room for thermal coal imports in notches from Australia, which was singled out for special treatment. And then something strange happened. From early 2021, China started to dry its coal inventories down hard, and deliveries from northern ports to southern ports started to drop. This might not be a big deal, but China's power demand was flying at the same time, with electricity consumption up to 14% year over year in April to June, and steel output up 21% coal stocks started to fade rapidly. So demand was very strong, but supply fell behind clearly both for domestic production and imports. As China's coal production is heavily centered in a few provinces, already some banks have lowered China's growth prospects due to the power crunch. China faces risks in procuring coal quickly due to a variety of pressures including logistics and regulations. That indicates a stutter in economic activity and attendant hitches in the regional supply chain may not be fully avoided. Many observers seem to be worried about a significant rate of energy price shock. China's power shortage could lead to a rise in prices for many export goods that could result in a modest rise in consumer inflation in advanced economies. Since the beginning of the pandemic, China has faced several unexpected challenges. The trade spat with Australia, the continued South China Sea shipping congestion, and a shortage of coal supply are testing the country's economic capabilities and problem-solving skills. China has moved up its efforts to engage Russia, Mongolia, and other third parties to fill their coal shortage. Hence, policymakers in Beijing have not given any indication of whether China will reopen importing Australian coal. China has started tapping stranded imports of Australian coal, according to media reports. Beijing had halted those deliveries due to political tensions, but vessels that have idled near ports have now received clearance to discharge some of the coal. The reports also say that last week said Indian firms snacked about 2 million tons of Australian coal at a discounted price that were sitting in Chinese warehouses. 
China consumed about 4 billion tons of coal last year, with the majority of that coming from domestic sources. Fossil fuel accounts for 70% of China's power generation mix, with coal taking the lion's share. An estimated 200 million tons of coal are needed during each winter month. The Chinese government is diversifying overseas sources of coal as well. Between January and August, China increased coal imports from the US to roughly eight times the volume from a year earlier. Imports of Colombian coal nearly tripled during the span. South Africa also exported coal to China, something that didn't happen in the year earlier period. Starting this month, State Grid Corporation of China has extended the number of hours Russian-produced electricity will be transmitted to Heilongjiang province. The daily window has been widened to 16 hours from 5 hours. The unusual step was taken to address the power shortage in the northeastern region, which has affected the lives of residents as well as factory operations. During the first six days of this month, State Grid, a state-owned enterprise, increased the amount of electricity procured from power companies by 16% from a year earlier, according to Chinese media. Although some manufacturers have announced that they will restart operations this month, it appears that restrictions on power usage will remain in place in several regions. But recently, China has partially eased its unofficial ban on Australian coal, with some shipments of the goods allowed to clear customs as authorities struggle to deal with a national power shortage threatening the country's economic recovery. Coal industry executives and diplomats say they're hopeful the move is the first phase of a broader easing of restrictions imposed almost a year ago, while China would be unwilling to be seen to be backing away from its efforts to punish Australia economically, its current power crisis means it has little choice. A senior coal industry executive in China on Monday confirmed reports that Australian coal was being released from bonded storage. This means smaller shipments of coal that have arrived in China but not been allowed through customs were now being released. He said, the embargo still applies. There has been no policy change to allow coal to be imported, but there have been Australian cargoes afloated but not distributed. Customs is not allowing those to be cleared through the port. Australian miners said they were unaware of any major shift in policy, but had heard rumors about smaller volumes of coal being allowed in. Energy research firm Wood Mackenzie has figured that 5 million tons of cooking coal and 3 million tons of thermal coal stockpiled at Chinese ports could be cleared by custom officials for use in China's domestic market. However, those relatively small amounts involved would do little to cool surging prices. Energy research company Kepler also said a total of five vessels waiting offshore had discharged 383,000 tons of Australian thermal coal into China last month. It's possible the discharged coal had been resold to other countries, but traders said this was unlikely because of signals from Chinese authorities that it would be allowed to clear customers. The ban part of a wider campaign of economic oppression that also targeted Australian exports of wine, beef, barley, and seafood has come at the worst time for the Chinese government, which is scrambling for more thermal coal to power its electricity generators. China desperately needs thermal coal used to generate electricity as the country faces a bleak winter that could leave millions without heating. The pressure domestically on coal supplies is immense. Indonesia is watching closely. Its coal exports to the world's second biggest economy jumped 50% in the first half of this year. But the nation can't supply enough coal for China, and the fuel is lower grade than the Australian product. China's authorities may loosen their import quotas as they fight their prices. China's most traded thermal coal futures contract in Zhengzhou jumped more than 10% to a record high of 1,408.2 yuan per ton on Monday, after flooding in Shanxi in the country's north forced the closure of dozens of coal mines. Over the past two weeks, authorities have ordered power cuts at many factories. While there have been widespread reports of power outages and restrictions being imposed on homes and businesses in the country's north, higher demand for coal due to historically cold weather and a reduction in coal productions as China imposes carbon emissions targets have coincided with restrictions on Australia coal and global disruptions. Proposed measures included transmitting gas from the south to the north to power residential heating, as well as implementing temporary tax deferral policies for coal and power enterprises facing difficulties, state media reported. An official told the China Daily, electricity and coal supply are crucial to people's lives and ensure stable economic performance. It must be guaranteed. Ensuring energy security and keeping industrial and supply chains stable are among the six priority areas where protection is needed. There mustn't be any let up in our efforts. 
some executives and diplomats hoped an easing of the coal ban could pave the way for a broader scale back in China's campaign of economic coercion. The Morrison government has made this a condition for considering China's application to join the Trans-Pacific Partnership Regional Trade Pact. With China's inventories low and winter heating and power demand starting to rise soon, China can be expected to increase imports, although this will likely last only until China can supply its own needs again. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, then give this video a big thumbs up and share it. For more exciting videos, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. I'll be back with another exciting video soon. Till then, check out our channel for more exciting videos and stay tuned.